Hey folks, James Weatherly. Going to answer the question, can airplanes actually land themselves? Well, the answer, well, let's call it, for the most part, certain ones, yes. Eh, 95% of the thing they can do by themselves. So I'm going to explain how that works. Uh, a little bit about what has to happen on the ground, what has to happen in the airplane, the crew member, and all the stuff to works together so an airplane can land itself, and also some new developments in future technology for airplanes landing themselves. So we're going to do a little discussion of that, look some great videos, and also answer the question, could a passenger land the airplane themselves? So we'll look at all those kind of things here in this video. Oops, I almost forgot three important quick things. One, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, look at that button down on the corner. It'll be the lower right hand. Press it one time, hit subscribe, then there'll come up a little bell. You've got to ring that. Anytime we put a new YouTube video up, you'll get a notification. Whoops, second thing. Uh, if you're not following us on Twitter, make sure you go to Twitter and it's at JTW Pilot. We have a 24 hour a day aviation feed that, hey, we've got a super cool thing with called pixels where we have aviation artwork you can buy mugs you can buy pictures you can buy phone covers it's super cool check that out i'll put it in the description thanks a bunch enjoy watching well let's first talk about the ground equipment so that airplanes can land themselves it's a fairly old system from back uh, dating in the world war ii and moving on era it's called the instrument landing system. There's a ground-based transmitter that transmits the left and right of the runway centerline. That's called the localizer. And then the up and down of a perfect path that you see in the picture. That's called the glide slope. Well, this electronic cone precisely aligns the airplane for a landing. Now, there are various versions of this, but this is a basic system. It provides the pilot through his needles guidance, says fly left, fly right, fly up, fly down. Now, there has been created a system of ever improving accuracy. And the system that is used to allow the airplane to land itself is called the Category 3 ILS. It's a super precision system that a limited number of airplanes have. So that's the key is that electronic system. The next key is some of the improved ground aids. The pilot has very specialized airport lighting so that he can see the runway through the dense fog. Now, this does not cause him to start flying the airplane, but allows him to slowly uh, confirm and transition to a visual reference while the airplane's landing itself. It'll look something like this picture. He'll see these lights. They're called the approach lighting system. They'll lead him into what's called the touchdown zone, and so he can see. Now, you're going to see in the videos, it's not like this super clear picture when you're coming in to land, but it is an important part. If the lights don't work, you can't even use the system, so they're an important part. Now, the last part is the part in the airplane, the autopilot system. Now, as a pilot, you study this. Here's a diagram. There's bajillions of things, computers, gyros, servos that all work together. And essentially, the controls of the airplane, the ailerons, the elevator, the rudder are all linked up together, even to the point for a true auto land system, when the airplane touches down, the nose wheel actually steers right down the center line. It's amazing. I've seen pilots who are learning the auto land, and this is a common mistake. When you're trying to clear the runway, you can't. The airplane keeps turning back the runway. That's because you got to turn the autopilot because it even steers the airplane on the runway. And the pilot uses an interface system that looks something like this. It's called, for most carriers, uh, depends on the manufacturer, MCP mode control panel. He has a series of buttons, and once he presses these buttons correctly, it will arm what's called 
the auto land sequence. So you have the autopilot steering the airplane, you have the auto throttles moving the engine to the desired speed, and this whole thing combining with the computer is called the auto flight system leading to auto land. Now, let's look at a little clip of an actual automatic landing in an Airbus where it's VFR or where you can see. That will show you what it actually looks like. Here we go. Now let's look at the different kind of approaches. For years, we've had Category 1 ILS, which is basically fly the airplane down to 200 feet. The pilot has to see something or go around. This airplane's landing themselves have developed over the years in this Category 3 system, where the airplane, you can see in the chart 3C, there's no decision height, meaning the airplane flies itself right onto the runway. And the visibility requirements are established at each airport. I'll tell you the hardest thing about this, I've flown these for real, is once you touch down, is trying to seat a taxi is certainly one of the most difficult things. I'm going to show you several sequences of airplanes actually doing these approaches in poor weather, horrible weather, fair weather, so you can see how difficult it is for the pilot to adjust. That's why it has to be an automatic landing, because the pilot cannot really see adequately enough. Then I'll come back to you a little bit about the indications inside the cockpit. Here we go. Well, one thing every pilot learns is, real quickly, airplanes are machines and they break. So during this automatic phase, the pilot is monitoring things in case something should go wrong. So you see this instrument picture, and there's like bajillions of things to look at. Let me focus on two things that the pilot will be looking at. The first thing is the pilot will be looking at this top section in the red box. This is called the FMA, or the Flight Mode Annunciator, telling you what the autopilot is doing and most importantly he needs to see that land three to tell him that everything is working for a category three landing now most airlines the pilot who's landing 
He's looking outside. The pilot who's not landing is looking inside. So that if anything goes wrong, he's going to say something went wrong and go around. So it's a little bit of a weird situation. The guy landing's looking outside. He's relying on the guy inside to monitor the computer. The other thing he looks at is the guidance. You see two red blocks. The block on the right is telling the vertical guidance. He's perfectly centered up. And then below is the left and right guidance showing that he's just needing to turn a couple of degrees the left to be perfectly on the center line and the autopilot is taking care of all this so he's monitoring uh, excuse me monitoring this let's look at this in real time see what it looks like couple things I wanted to cover was some new technology that's being implemented to allow kind of planes to land themselves. One is the use of HUDs, Heads Up Display Unit. They've been used in the military for a long time and a number of airlines uh, have used them. Now they're coming with a lot of airplane standard equipment like uh, the Boeing 787, the Embraer 190, all have heads up units. And you'll see in some pictures I'll show you, basically they project the instruments on a, a screen so you can look straight through and you've got part of the real world and part of the instruments extremely cool another version that's being used is called synthetic vision where essentially they project on your instruments kind of a google earth picture of what you're seeing they've also got cameras that do this and the fa here in the united states is fixing to authorize lower landing minimums even based on this so some really cool stuff coming on now, I wanted to stop and answer one question. What happens if both the pilots conk out? Could a passenger be talked down and do this? There's no record of two pilots dying in flight and a passenger who's not a qualified pilot taking over since we've had auto land, at least not that I'm aware of. It is remotely possible they could be talked through it. There's quite a few little programs that have to be done, and you still have to lower the gear and lower the flaps accordingly. Hopefully, we'll never find out if that has to happen in real life. Hey, we're going to take you to the ground. Some great videos. Enjoy and keep watching at the JTW Pilot Channel. Dual head-up displays, or HUDs, are standard on the 787. The HUD displays critical flight information on retractable see-through screens positioned in front of each pilot's eyes. The HUD allows each pilot to see the big picture and critical flight information at the same time.
inside.